Hey folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play A Little Path of Exile. I'm playing the Essence Challenge League with my summoner-oriented character. We did just run into a strong box here. I don't I don't think I'm gonna do anything to like um uh in magic the strong box. I did get a little stuck over here. You know what I wanna do? I wanna get up on the on the ledge. And I feel a lot safer doing that. My flaming skulls can go everywhere, my zombies will go everywhere. We're gonna clear this up. All the guys with little golden halos, those are the ones we have to kill to get our strong box finished up. I'm just gonna jump across a little closer here. And just keep dropping flaming skulls in these guys. They killed one of my zombies, another zombie. There you go. Keep the count up to five. Now, if you are playing a summoner build, there's actually quite a few fun things you can do. For example, like summoning the skeletons can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, but one of the support spells that you can get... Okay, so these piles of gold may... So they're always here. And they're always normally ignorable. But we've got this... This prophecy where they might spawn... I don't want to go into the lair right now. Defeat the bubbling gold that rises from the gold pile. So, are they rising? Definitely going to look around a little bit more. Fireball these guys. See what this prophecy does for us. Um, I could also look it up. It would be a good idea. Um... Pools of Wealth. I'm just looking it up on the wiki to see if there's an entry that explains it. Yep, four bubbling gold monsters will appear somewhere. They'll drop currency. So, probably I just have to roam around until I find it. Oh, I lost a zombie. That's a dead end. I don't want to leave the zone. Like, it feels like it should be here, because here's where the pools of gold are. Gold are. Um... There's an unexplored area over here, so let me check that. I mean, it's possible. Sometimes these doorways don't actually leave a zone. It's possible I want to go through there, and in the next zone there will be a thing, but... Can't click on them, do anything like that. Nothing to trigger. Again, these gold piles are always here. Uh, let me just Google here. Um, Path of Exile, Pools of Wealth... Bug report, not activating. Okay, happens inside the fight with the boss, even though it's supposed to, it seems like it should be in the previous area. Okay, all right, good. Google to the rescue. I didn't want to just, like, screw up and avoid this prophecy, because it sounds like it should be pretty rewarding. There we go, okay. Good stuff. So these guys are not normally here. Bubbling gold. Uh, zombie, zombie. Oh yeah, and they're definitely dropping some stuff for me. Zombie, zombie, zombie. Oh, they don't drop corpses. Holy shit, that is a lot of wealth! Okay, lots of currency, indeed. Look at that. Coral ring, may as well grab it. Because I think I'm running some non-magical ones. It's a pure life thing. I may want to use it. May as well, actually, for now. Yeah, it's more life. I'll just get rid of the non-magical flask. That's going to be okay. Um, yeah, coral ring, what do you got? More intellect, more mana. Sure, why not? Okay, and now we should be fighting a boss. Oh, I leveled up. Oh my god, there's more of them! <gasps> oh, baby. Although, again, with no corpses, so they just keep killing my zombies. Oh, that's okay. It'll be a little bit more annoying finding the starting boss, so that's fine. Uh, I don't think we need any of this stuff. Um, right, level. That's what I was going to do. It's like, there's something I'm forgetting. So I've got the Grave Intentions, which is good. I think I want to get my way up to minion instability relatively soon. Are there any other minion nodes along the way? I'm sure there are. I just don't remember where they're... Mind over matter is something I want to grab. Puppet Master. There we go. More life. More summons. So what path do I want to take for that? Crit chance for spells. Block chance. Power charges. Flask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on a sec. I got like a calculator that I have open before, so I was sort of eyeballing some stuff. I don't know if I still have it open. I wonder. Okay, I think, yeah, we're going to want to go for Cruel Preparation. As I say, I wonder if um, if any of like, the things that boost fire damage would help with the, the, the skulls. I'm betting not, but I don't actually know for sure. Um, I may want to grab this, just because that's a lot of int. And the spell damage would help with the fireball, and the cast speed is generally okay. It might not be a bad thing to grab, especially right now. 
And then, yeah, work my way here, probably grab the socket, then get the life over here. Maybe even go through this to go here. Oh, yeah, minion life. Here's another minion node. Excellent. Excellent. Energy shield, lightning resist. Yeah, maybe. Is this minion stuff? Oh, yeah, more curses. Actually, that might be handy later on. Um, so these are cool. Like, you can have sockets inside of your skill tree as well. So if I unlock this, and there's certain jewels you can put in there. I haven't found one yet, but I'm sure I will at some point. Hmm. I'm going to go this way for now. Uh, I'll go for the life into minion stability. Yeah, that sounds good to me. We'll grab that. It's 10 in for now, which ain't bad. Any other uh, gold piles? I was going to say, I want to trigger them all before I fight the boss, although it looks like, yeah, the boss has been triggered, and there we go. Oh, prophecy completed. Very exciting. I wonder what would happen if I, like, triggered the prophecy, then left, like, after killing a couple of them, and then... You know, would I would I be able to get all the, the pools of gold again? Probably not. I'm willing to bet it just sort of, like, doesn't spawn anything extra. But I wonder if there's a way to abuse it. Okay, this fight is actually pretty easy with the auto-targeting stuff. And again, I have actually a shit ton of health. Now, that's only phase one. Phase two should, should actually start summoning adds. Which isn't bad, because then I can get some zombies out of it. But for now, just my skulls are just eating her. It's very entertaining. This, these fights tend to be much, much harder, of course, on Cruel Difficulty. The elemental damage gets a lot higher. There we go. So kill the adds, summon some skeletons. Maybe I should get out of the Whirlpool. But mostly just keep sending freaking skulls at her. There's another Silken Vest with three slots, which I think is the most I can get right now. Steel Greaves, Saber. That's a lot of quality on that. I don't think there's anything else I need to worry about right now. Um... Yeah, I need the strength for that. More mana, who cares about this? These are all I need. Okay, and that, and that, and that. All right. So, uh, we can read the diary, but that doesn't do anything. We're going to exit here. This is going to find... This is Act 2 we're entering into now. Boop, boop. But, um, when we do get to uh, the next waypoint, we will probably want to bop back to the previous town so that we can um, turn in a quest. We had a quest to kill her. What was I going to say? I was going to say something about skeletons and uh, the um, the totem uh, the totem spell casting. Um, so you can get a support gem that adds uh, that links. I don't know, changes your spell basically. Instead of casting the spell directly, you plop down a totem that spans it out for you, and that can actually be kind of handy with the skeletons. You just plop down a totem, and it just keeps summoning a stream of these skeletons for you. That can be quite fun, because I find that, like, your own character spending time um, summoning the skeletons isn't particularly worthwhile. And that is something that we could investigate on this particular character over here. Zombie, 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 zombie. There it is. Max zombies. Get all the skeletons going all over the place. But, I don't know, we're doing kind of okay. So, yeah, because I'm going to want to have my own personal casting time be dedicated to just spamming out Raging Spirits. My Flaming Skulls. I'm not going to want to summon skeletons everywhere. It is something you can do with, like, to get the initial kills. Is like, summon some skeletons to get some initial kills so that you can raise zombies and then just keep using that. But, which is why you always need something. See, that's 14% quality. Oh, I'm full. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to worry about it. Let's run. These monkeys can be a bit of a pain in the ass. Especially if there's a bigger monkey that can, like, summon them and... I don't know. I don't remember if he enrages them or something like that. Yeah, you can see the hammer thing is over here. This guy here summons more apes from the trees. Which is a bit unpleasant. But there's no AoE in here. Which means my zombies survive pretty well. And then we just skull them all up. Bum, 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 bum. Skull, skull, skull. Again, right now, you could definitely get faster clear with something else. Um, and again, you know, there's no reason I have to be using the, the Raging Spirit right now. I could be using something else. On the other hand, Raging Spirit worked out really well against that boss. Because it, it's effectively, like, long range. It's, like, beyond my vision range that these Flaming Spirits will go and hunt down some enemies. Just barely! Just barely past my vision range. But they will go and do that. And actually, if they, like, sort of chase a minion, you know, to here, and then they see one off the screen at that point, they will keep going further. That was 16%. That's a lot of inventory space. Can I, like, do Tetris to... In the theory, yeah, I could because, it, but it needs a four slot. Like, you know, fuck it, it's fine. There's probably something I can drop. 
Good luck. Fireball candidate. Yeah, cluster up on me while I fireball you. Excellent. Again, we're really looking for the melee splash damage, Jim. Oh, that's one of the other things. The masters, when they level up, they don't just sell you. Um, they don't just sell you items like you know those magic and rare items that are unidentified. So it's sort of like a bit of a gamble. But they can also sell you skill gems, and that becomes a much much more reliable way to fill out your skill gems because you can. I mean, we've seen it. You can get skill gems as a drop, and a few of the quests provide it. But oh, I need to resummon some zombies here. Um, but historically, it has sometimes been a bit of a pain in the ass, an early character in a new zone, to get all the gems you really need to get your strategy to work out. It was a little bit luck-based. Um, but now you have the ability... It's still kind of luck-based, because what you know the, uh, the masters only offer usually up to three skill gems at a time. It refreshes their inventory whenever you level up. So you're not guaranteed to find what you have, but it dramatically increases your chance to get things. Um, and especially if you're like, you might buy stuff for other characters. Just like, do I have this gem yet? No, I don't own this gem. Well, let's buy it, because in the future, we might need it for something. You see, all these guys are about ready to level up. And there's the forest encampment. Forest encampment is the Act 2 town. So we can talk to some people in here. I don't think we'll auto-complete any quests at this time. But what we'll do first is I'm going to teleport back to the Act 1 town. Grind, 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 grind. Act 1 town. Whoa. Loading things from my hard drive. I don't have this on an SSD. So I'm just going to go... That was a weird click. Actually going here, Lines Eye Watch, or Act 1 Town, because we do have a quest to complete. And I don't know if I'll need inventory space first. I don't think so. Now, a lot of these aren't actual quest completions. They're just talking. Oh, no, there we go. Passive skill point. You do not want to miss out on that. Boom. Like and another skill. Ice Nova, Firestorm. Arc is an excellent spell. Very fun to use. Flesh Offering, Essence Drain. So, Flesh Offering is something that works with minions. It's even got the minion keyword, you can see. It consumes a corpse, temporarily empowers your minions with swiftness. The skill consumes other nearby corpses, increasing duration with each corpse con uh, consumed. Um, so, it normally lasts three seconds, gets another half second for every extra corpse in the area. Gives a pretty big attack speed boost to your minions. Does, you know, give them haste, basically. Does eat corpses, so you have to be kind of sure that you don't need it for more zombie summons. I may as well take it. I'm going to just throw it over here for now. Um, I don't know how actively I'll be using it, because I think I'd rather use my time spamming up more skulls, but there's... I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Later on, I think we get a haste aura. So we did get that skill point, which means... Right, I'm going here. I'm going to go here, pick up the life, and then go to the minion instability. Yeah, I'm happy about that. Boom. Quest completed. So there's no known quest in Act 1. Again, I'm not sure if there was an optional thing in Mervale's uh, cavern. What does Tarkley say? No, he's just like, oh, you're damn cool. I mean, it's a fair bit of damage early on, but again, I'm not going to go and keep things for characters that aren't me right now. I'll just prefer selling things. Because these, no matter what, are going to be low-level items. So the, the rarity, you, you're going to get a lot of them, and they don't last that long. Look, the physical damage on this wand is quite interesting. That's quite a bit of extra physical damage on the saber, but again, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna save low level stuff. You you out level it so fast, it's not worth keeping it around, if it's not for me. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Now, I will have to pay attention. I've been wearing what I've been wearing for a while. I will have to be a little bit more attentive to uh, potential upgrades that might actually be kicking around. Do I need to keep that? No, I don't. I can sell that. And this, and weapon quality, we'll have to sell a bunch of these at some point. But yeah, I like to just build up a critical mass and then just dump a ton of it. And the coral ring, which we'll keep around because of whatever. Sell the flask for, yeah, basically meaningless currency, but, you know, waste not, want not. And you can see I'm accruing some of these scrolls here. It's because of all these random scroll fragments and different things like that. So I may as well grab those, and I'm going to portal back to the Act 2 town. Mm-hmm-hmm. <laughs> So I could pick up some quests here, but it doesn't actually matter. You know, we get some flavor text and a little bit of quests. Hi. Hello, thank you. Yep. She does point out that there's a side quest, an optional side quest in the first zone. That is one advantage. If you talk to people to pick up quests, sometimes you'll find out about an optional side quest that you may not have noticed. Again, you don't need to pick up the quest before you do it. Everything will work perfectly fine. But if you don't know what all the quests are, like you might not realize that there's this side quest to find a den in this first zone. The old fields that we're moving into right now, there's a den you can find here, and you got to kill a bear. If you do click on one of these quests, it will highlight an area to show you things you can do. So that's quite handy. 
Mm -hmm. So we'll be we'll be looking for that bear den in here. And since we're in a higher level zone, this level 14 zone, we're level 15, but different types of drops. We might find better base type items. We may want to go and use more of these essences to roll some more cheap uh, rares. Nice level up there. These stone guys are quite fun. They roll around. They do interesting things. Um, yeah, I'll grab the life increase over here. Make us even tankier. We are already really tanky. But that's good. I mean, if you have to do less running around, like running away from things, it means you can keep DPSing. I mean, obviously, the more damage you do, then the less damage you'll take because you just kill things faster. Although with bosses, there's, you know, there, you don't really have the ability to insta-burst down bosses before they can do their huge damage. So life really helps with bosses clearing. Um, and at higher difficulties in particular, you can run into a lot of like unique guys that happen to have traits to like quickly close on you or do a ridiculous amount of fast damage. So survivability is always good. Um, but it's not just like, so you, you have to do less running away if you're more survivable, which means you can DPS longer. And of course, if you die, um, the penalty to dying in normal is not too bad. I think once you get past normal difficulty, you lose experience points when you die. I think on normal you don't, or it might be your own personal level. I, I don't recall exactly. Um, so, you know, you lose some progress if you die and lose XP, which I think is a thing um, on the, in the standard league. And But not only that, I mean, you know, if you die, then you have to do a lot of walking to get back where you were. And you might find yourself just unable to defeat someone. Usually, if you're unable to defeat someone, it's mostly... Oh, this one's already magic. I could identify this to find out what the traits are. And then, of course, reroll. Ooh. Contain items have 8% quality. That's very nice. Especially if they drop something good. We'll see. Uh, zombie, 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 zombie. There we go. Get up to five zombies. And then keep dropping skulls. Oh, no, that's clear. Superior play. So yeah, everything that's going to be dropped is going to have exactly eight quality. Now eight's a little low for me to like decide to bring things home, but oh, it's nice with the flask. But it is nice with um, with this rare that it's already got quality for us. That I think we're going to swap. I mean, we're losing a bunch of evasion rating. That's true. But I like things that give me a lot of life. Also, fire resist because we don't have any right now. Yep, I like it. So we lose a tricorn, which is too bad, but we do get this plague mask thing, which is kind of funky. All right. So that's the exit to zone. I don't want to exit right now because I'm looking for that side quest. Giant, weird, freaky bear things. Oh, this guy, it's, he's a nice guy. He's totally a nice guy. So it's a unique that's always in this area. I mean, again, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I think he's always in the area. There might be like a pool of uniques and a chance or whatever, but he's not hes not random, right? He's not like a rare guy. Extra life. And he does like to roll over enemies, and we lost one of our zombies. There's his rolling move. And a scale vest. And I think I can ignore the rest. Do, 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 do. Random maroon titan over there. Ah, excellent. Oh, and there's the, uh, there's the den. Okay, so let me load up the area here with some skulls, preemptively. And trigger this, and then move away slightly, and then keep sculling these guys. Actually, that might have been a good fireball candidate. They're nicely clustered together. All right, now go back to sculling. Muttering Essence of Contempt. Ooh, there's a higher level version, because it can do items up to 45. So I'll drop down into the den. Oh, I should have summoned another zombie first, but that's okay. We still have four. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So there's going to be, yeah, spiders and bears in here and a bear boss. Summon a zombie. I love how you summon, like, humanoid zombies no matter what the corpse is. But, you know, it's magic. Shush. Oh, we got a rare over here. Skull, 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 skull. Yeah, skulls do feel like they're doing half-decent damage. Again, I think we could get, you know, more damage, more pure damage using other abilities right now. But would it be quite as safe? The range from the skulls and the, uh, the convenience of the auto-targeting is hard to beat. I think I lost some zombies. Feels like I've only got two around here. So this will be an interesting test to see if it stays at five. Oh, yeah, they do teleport. So I got so far away from the zombies, they teleported to me. Good stuff. Very common with games. It eliminates the frustration of bad minion AI, right? How much would minions suck if they have shitty AI and, you know, you have to work your ass off to get them to follow you? You would never use minion spells. So by having them, like, auto undy stuck themselves that means that minions remain viable which is great 
don't think there's two levels to the den. I think we just explore around until we find the big giant bear, kill him, and then there's gonna there's a back door that we can exit from there. Zombie, ooh, frost bomb. So there's another skill gem. Could play around with some different skills to mix it up here. I mean, mostly a question of do we replace a fireball, which actually is not a bad idea. Since my flaming skulls do fire damage, if we run into fire resistance stuff, we actually might want my, my left click ability to be something that doesn't do fire damage. Right, let's look into that. So what does the frost bomb do? Creates a crystal, pulses with cold for duration. Each pulse applies a debuff to your enemies, reduce their cold resistance and life regeneration. When duration ends, it explodes. Its base duration is what? 3.5 seconds? That sounds way too slow and shitty. Sounds like the sort of thing we could combine if we were doing other spell, other cold damage, since it does reduce their resistance, but doesn't sound useful for us. Excellent. More essences. Essence spiders over here. So we have full zombies, which is good. We'll just build up a stockpile of skulls. I'm going to pop this one, and then I will go and teleport myself back here, because I'm a little worried about being surrounded. There we go. Wacka, wacka, wacka. That would have been good fireball potential, too, but... Another whispering essence of woe. Uh, this is a dead end. Okay. Well, I'm happy we went this way anyway, because, you know, more of these essences is good. Use more Quicksilver. It'd be nice when we get a Quicksilver one that's got magic. Where the hell are we going? Hold on. Oh, there's another branch over there. Really? Man, I don't think I missed any side passages over here. Sometimes it can be a little hard to notice them on the map, but... A very linear version of the den. I don't think it's usually shaped like this. Vaguely annoying. Unless this is a dead end, in which case, then I definitely have missed something somewhere. And I mean, it feels like this should be a dead end. But it's not, at least not so far. A few fireballs in there. Yeah, okay, there's stuff. Boo -boo -boo. Lots of big giant bears! I still, okay, my skulls will defend me. Ooh, zombie down, respawn him. Skull, 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 skull. Zombie down, respawn, probably because they're sitting in the fire, so there's probably going to be a lot of that. Okay. Now, one of the reasons I'm quite tanky. Well, I mean, I don't know how much the uh, the regen, the life regen on the shield has come into play. Because I'm actually mostly, it's my, like, energy shield that's come in. But yeah, the, the shield that I've got in my hand regenerates 1% of my life every second. And what, 5% when I'm low? I don't know what low is. I don't think it's, it specifies. 5% when on low life. I think your screen starts to turn color at a certain point. There's, there we go, the Great White Beast. That's who I'm here to kill. So I don't know if that happens at 25%, 10%, what? But yeah, but I don't think we've gotten into a lot of low life situations. I still have all my zombies. There we go, there's the first one that dies. I knew it was going to happen any second. And he's down. We'll grab that for the rainbow. Velvet slippers. I have velvet slippers right now. These have triple link. Again, we will want a red one, but how does it compare? Six of one, half dozen of the other. It's got the fire resist, which I do like, but I think I'm gonna keep my current one because that red socket will actually be more handy if I can get a melee splash damage support type gem. Mm -hmm. I think the fire dam resistance would actually be better. Okay, so the side quest is done. No, we come out a different place from that den, which is kind of fun. So I can just leave this zone now. Go into the crossroads. And in the crossroads, first thing I'm going to be looking for is a waypoint. Because I'll probably go to town and turn in the great bear thing. I don't remember, that might give me another passive skill point. A lot of the optional ones have really good rewards, because, I mean, otherwise, why would you do them, right? You'll see. It might it might be a rare ring. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Skull, 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 skull. Skull, skull. I'm gonna get some bandits coming in soon here. So I'm expecting the waypoint to be near the road, but it's actually not guaranteed to do that. Wow, there's a lot of dudes around here. Wacka, wacka, wacka. Hey, level up! Sweet. And yes, we're going to take this. 10% more life. 5% to all elemental resist is quite nice. Look like at that. 435 life. Actually crazy at this point. A couple of uh, just backstory books we could read in there, but we're not going to sit here and listen to audio. There we go. Waypoint. Let's do this. Let's return to the forest encampment. We can sell some stuff and pick up our reward. We got inventory space. Yes, we do. Yina! What you got for me? Oh, a rare belt. All right. Maximum emergency shield. Maybe. 
Um, yeah, but that's that's only 13. I think you can get much higher numbers here, but we're not. We've got a lot of things that are uh, increasing our life. So right, our bonus percentage life is really huge. So stacking more of it is quite good. Throwing physical damage, we're going to take the rare leather belt, and let's see here. Oh, okay. Well, first of all, like I was going to say, if it doesn't have an extra maximum life thing, it might still be worth just using the, the regular magic one as opposed to the rare. But it actually has more life with the plus 23 instead of the plus 14. And it gives me some cold resistance and some energy shield. And so it's clearly very good. So we're just going to sell the rest. Uh, this is all I need. Okay, good. Um, and we'll go and just vendor over here. So yeah, these are potentially even better than those, but uh, whatever, I don't care. Uh, that's a quality item. There's my cool tricorn. We'll get rid of it, even though it's got a lot of evasion. I mean, I suppose I could keep it for, like, if I decide to play a more evasion-based character. It might not be a bad thing to keep around. That's a lot of evasion and a little bit of life. What the hell? Greater Flask of Resistance. Oh, yeah, so this is not... Oh, no, it's a Mana Flask. Oh, hold on. Okay, so I'm going to sell this. What does this one do? This removes burning, which is nice. This one gives me 30% extra elemental resistance. Kind of six of one, half dozen the other. You do need something to remove burning at some point. I mean, this gives me more mana as well. It hardly matters. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna bank this one. I think it's about equivalent, especially at this point. Neither one of these are long-term flasks in any way whatsoever. Because I need higher level ones. So what I'm gonna do, uh, start here. So I'm gonna rename this. This is gonna be um, this is gonna be armor for below level 30 stuff. We keep around for that, including the tricorn. And you know what? I'll throw this belt in here. Level eight, level eight. Yes, yeah. so we'll get rid of this other one. Keep that one around for my new characters, if I decide to use them. Oops. Frost bomb goes in here. Currency goes in there. Oh, I can't. Oh, it's only got the five slots for these essences. Interesting. Now, the number of little ticks here shows you the level. So these are all level ones. This is a level two essence. So do we have any more contempt? Yeah. Now, I don't know how... I guess we're going to take a look here. Oh, yeah, stack size is nine, which means I can't do any more. If I go and sell you... If I try to sell you two... No, that's no good. If I sell you nine, okay, so it looks like it's a three-one ratio, which I guess I will use here. I mean, I'm not saving this. Um, let's see, armor, six to eight maximum energy shield, three to five. Okay, so you definitely, you know, leveling up is fine. I guess I'll do this. Now, it still means, like, I don't have enough storage for all of these. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move these to a separate stash. Uh, maybe what I can do is organize them by type and level. Uh, this is contempt. That's contempt, right? Yeah, so like this. There we go. Let's keep these slots open. I think there's like seven levels of them. I think only the first five can drop, but then the rest can be crafted. It, it's something kind of like that. Let me do this. And I don't have any more silver coins, do I? Oh, I do. Okay, that sounds fine. Do I have any more? I think I should just get as many of these as I've got. How many silver coins do I have? Okay, now I'm out. So presumably, I can't do this again. Okay, yeah, I don't have enough for any more. Okay, so I've got three. Old Fields... Broken Bridge. So this is Slay Undead. Slay Undead. You will slay a foe who drops four identical rare items. Calandra's Craft. Grand Treasure Fractured like a drop near it somehow goes unarmed. You will slay a foe who drops four identical rare items. That's weird! I mean, they're identical, so there's, there's a high chance that there's just going to be four vendor trash items, but I don't know if there's a way to maximize that. Alright, so we've got this. Now... What I'm going to do is I'm going to go left at this point um, because this zone, the Riverways, is slightly lower level. 
So it's a good idea. It's not so bad. We're actually in a pretty good shape on our character. But if you find yourself having difficulty with Act 2, do make sure that you're not focusing entirely in one direction. Because the further you go from town, the higher level the map is. So if we look here, right, this is level 14, this is 15, this is 15 over here. If we go over here, these are going to be level 16, 17, 18 maps, something like that. So it's a good idea to sort of bounce back and forth between the two sides. I'm going to be looking... Okay, we've got... Oh, I need one more zombie. Did I kill anyone yet? Yep, there we go. Good. Hello, you are... You might be an exile. I think you are an exile. I want to make sure to kill you. So, you're an exile, right? That's, that's what your character is. But you sometimes run into these rogue exiles, which drop really good drops. I'm assuming you're one. They tend to be very, very difficult. Yeah, I think we killed it here. I think that was a mirror image. Uh, they tend to be quite a bit more difficult, but they tend to drop much, much better loot, or just more loot. So I think that's what happened there, but it doesn't look like we got anything particularly notable there. I'm going to mostly ignore magic stuff, which isn't necessarily right. There's a lot of times, especially in this case, where we don't really have a good set of equipment yet, um, that you actually have a good chance of finding a magic item that might be better with a rare, or, you know, maybe even a magic item you want to upgrade to a rare, although I don't think that's the sort of thing we're going to be doing at this juncture. Um, we're going to want to save those items for more proper crafting. Still going to find Spell Echo would be really good. I still think that I would prefer to get the melee spash first, but Spell Echo would be good, because, yeah, we would be spamming out twice as many of these skulls. Oh, I need another zombie. Minion damage gem has gone up. So how much does it do now? Uh, right here. 33% more damage. Is that what it started at? Or did it start at 30%? I don't remember. Doesn't feel like it's gone up very much. It might be something that levels up very slowly. That is entirely possible. Ooh, an Orb of Fusing. Very good one. It reforges, it re-randomizes um, the links between sockets on an item. Which is when later on, you find an item with like maybe six sockets, and you want to use a bunch of Orbs of Fusing to link them all together. But it is random. You can go from something that has three link sockets to something that has no link sockets to something that has link th six link sockets simultaneously, although the six link is very rare. And I think it'd be very, very actually rare to get um, zero link sockets as well, especially in something that has six items. Just because the way the math works out, you're usually going to get something that's got like two to four sockets on each attempt. Mm hmm. Well, since we are in a new act and we are going around, what I'm looking for is. Um, a path to what's up here, and we're going to go and kill our first bandit relatively soon. Uh, are we? Or is that where Oak is? I don't remember where Oak is. We're going to want to keep Oak alive on this one. So in Act 2, there are these three bandits. And you can see, deal with the bandits quest right over here. If you go and kill all three bandits, then you get an extra skill point. Which is pretty cool, an extra passive skill point. However, each bandit will offer you a reward where if you kill the other bandits, but leave them alive, they will give you some other reward. And almost everyone in this first act keeps Oak alive, because Oak gives you plus 40 permanent max health, which is a lot. I mean, plus 40 health is more than you can get from any skill point, and health tends to be one of the most powerful things. In the later acts, and, and I think there's other, there, the other bonuses are something like, um, I don't remember. In the second act, there's one will give you bonus physical damage, one will give you bonus magic damage, and the third one, I don't remember what they offer you. So some people will take the bonus damage in the second act, others will kill all, all of the bandits and get the, um, get the passive skill. What you have to do is sort of wait, like, what does the passive skill give me versus what the bandits are offering me? And it depends on the character, but yeah, that, that oak one is pretty much set in this act. So that's what we're going to be looking for here. I don't remember where the bandits are. In fact, I think we're going to run into Oak first. And I don't remember if we have to turn in the quest at Oak after. I think we do, actually. So we'll end up having to visit him twice, which is a wee bit annoying. Um, path. Yeah, well, you know what? Let's not worry about it. We'll just explore and it'll be okay. So, yes, I was going to put a cut in here, though. So when we come back, we will uh, look into continuing to clear Act 2 over here. And see if we can't get lucky with some more support gems, which... That's the biggest thing. Right now, it's not like an item that will embiggen our character the most. It will be support gems, which will have the biggest impact. Although, we only only an extra couple will make a difference. Because right now, uh, the loot we're going to get doesn't have that many sockets on it. So, we can't like end up with something like one active skill supported by like um, five support gems. Alright, thanks for watching. See you next time.